All right, let's talk about our rotational um, motion lab here. So I've, I've made some improvements to my uh, lab setup. Let's take a look at it here. All right, so I try to make a nice, smooth and continuous uh, launch point here off my ramp. I'm gonna see if I can uh, roll my ball bearing down this without it destroying itself or anything like that. So I want to take a couple uh, quick measurements here of the setup. So my launching point is uh, exactly uh, 93 centimeters. So that's our line. Uh, and I'm going to try to launch it from, just for calculation, it's being easier. Some even number. I'm going to go for 15. Piece of tape. Piece of tape there. Same every time. And then I'm going to, on the floor, you know, try to mark where it lands uh, each time I launch it. Cheating a little bit because I do have like an official ball bearing uh, that I stole from the lab. So let's take a quick look at the setup. Let's see if it will actually uh, roll down here. So we have uh, my Y height, that's my table height, is uh, 93 centimeters, and my ramp height is 15 centimeters. So I'm gonna hold this ball just above that mark. So the front edge is at the uh, 15 centimeter height off of the table. I'm gonna launch it down, and it totally missed. All right, that's not bad. Let's see if we can see the landing. All right, dial two. That didn't even hit the, the floor. That's not good. That was like right here. That one definitely did. Right there. Sorry about my shoes. Pretty gross, right? Wow, right on the edge, right there. Seems better if I drop it. Wow, that hit the exact same spot right on the edge. So that's one, two, three that are good trials. That was a little bit more in, it looked like, right there. So one, two, three, four trials. We'll get one more good one. Uh, that one was like right, right on the edge. It didn't really clear it. So, all right, let's see what those are for measurements. So I have a little block of wood here <coughs> uh, because of the thickness of this. I've only floored half of the building, so. And uh, oh, the drop point's actually out a little bit from the table edge. It's out four and a half centimeters. So where is that? Four and a half centimeters. Okay, so we'll go. From, we'll measure from there. And uh, the closest one is forty. 49.5. Then the edge of that is right around 50. So we had two at 50. Uh, then we got a 50 and a half. And then the last one here is 51. 
Okay, so those are our measurements. Let's average those out. So we had uh, 49.5 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50.5 plus 51. Divided by five gives us an average of 50.2. That's in centimeters. So I'll have to do a conversion uh, for that here in a second. But that's our data. Let's see how we did with our data. All right, so we, let's write down our uh, values that we have here first. So we know that the height of our ramp H was equal to, what did I say it was, 15? 15 centimeters. The uh, height of our table was 93. Yeah, so 0.93. And the, uh, let's see, so our average distance was 50.2. Oh, point, sorry. Let's do meters for everything. Okay, those are the three measurements we really need to do the whole calculation, right? For our first calculation, we're trying to figure out how much time uh, it should be in the air. So we're gonna base that on the uh, delta y is equal to uh, our original velocity times time plus one half a t squared. In the y direction, the acceleration is caused by gravity, so a is actually gonna be gravity. Free fall starts at zero velocity, so this is zero. VO, which means that that's gone. <laughs> so our delta Y is equal to one half, we'll just call it GT squared because it's gravity. So delta Y is equal to one half GT squared. Our Y is 0.93. Uh, we're looking for time, so we have to solve this equation for T. So what I'm going to do uh, first probably is multiply each side by two to get rid of the one half. That's going to get rid of that, and we're going to end up with uh, 2 delta y is equal to g t squared. We divide each side by g, um, then we end up with 2 delta y over g is equal to t squared. And then to get time by itself, you need to do a square root of each side. So you do a square root of t, that gets rid of that do a square root of that side, and that will give you equation one. So equation one is equal to t. t is equal to the square root of two times our delta y divided by g. Okay, so for that, we are going to use uh, my data that I just had. My delta y is uh, 0.93 meters. So time is going to be equal to 2 times 0.93 divided by gravity times 0.81. And uh, let's just see what that is equal to. That's our derivation. I'm going to raise that. And uh, where did I put the calculator? There it is. All right, so we have a square root of two times uh, 0.93 divided by 9.81 is uh, 0 0.4, uh, 0 0.44 seconds. Save that for our calculation two. So that's that's number one. That's our equation for one. 
for equation two, we have to derive the same equation, um, but solving for uh, velocity. All right, so the same equation except in the x direction. So we're looking at the uh, change in x is related, is equal to your velocity in the x direction times time um, plus the one half a t squared. So same equation. But in this style, since it's working in the x direction, um, there's no acceleration anymore. It's left the ramp, it's just free falling and it has its x velocity that's going to stay constant the whole time. So in this case, a is uh, zero, acceleration is zero. So that whole part of the equation cancels out. So it's actually a much simpler equation uh, because all that we have to look at here is your original velocity, which is what we're looking for, time, which we already found, and delta x, which is our average uh, 50.2 centimeters. So we need to solve this equation for VO. So if you divide each side by time, then you get um, time cancels out. And VO is equal to the um, delta x divided by time. So for my data that I just reported, uh, my average distance in meters was a 0 0.502. And my uh, time I just calculated was a 0.44. So let's see what that equals. So 0.502 uh, divided by 0.44 gives us a velocity of 1.14 meters per second. All right, let's hope that's close. We're gonna find out in calculation three. So what are we using that for? Well, the main idea of this experiment is to see if we can get the correct um, inertia for a sphere, okay? So what we're relating this on is that the energy that we have in potential is gonna be equal to the kinetic energy plus the amount of energy from the uh, rolling motion. Uh, which is equal to one half. Hold on, I gotta think about this. No, it's uh, yeah, I inertia I W squared. So, what is potential energy? Well, okay, so this potential energy, this is. Uh, kinetic energy, so moving forward, and this is rolling energy. Okay, so we have like the velocity, we have like the rotation, and we have the gravitational part. Okay, so the gravitational part splits up into these two pieces the moving forward and the rotating part. So, how do we figure out the gravitational part? Well, that one's easy, it's just mg your mass times gravity times the height. Uh, you might remember that kinetic energy is one half mv squared, okay, which is, um, you know, it's dependent on your speed, which is why we calculated our velocity earlier. And this is the new part of it that we haven't seen before. Inertia is one half cw squared. It's actually very similar, like it's the same kind of equation. Um, C is the rotational um, coefficient. That's what we're looking for. And uh, W is your rotational velocity squared. So it's much like the linear velocity, but you know, it's, it's a little bit different. So how do we figure this uh, part of it out? Well, the, um, uh, this W quotient, by the way, is uh, you can convert that if you know your velocity and your radius, because if you have your normal velocity, which we calculated over here, and you know your radius, then you can multiply those together. I mean, divide, sorry, to get your uh, W. So you can put that in the equation. 
and C for a sphere uh, is a known amount. We're not going to put that in there, but um, we do need to know a couple other things. So MGH is equal to one half MV squared plus one half C and R squared V over R squared. Okay, so I'm putting the V over R in for my W. That's where this came from. And C actually has to have M and R in there. This really should have been a I here originally. I messed that up. Because I is equal to C M R squared. So this should have been one half up here, one half I W squared. Sorry about that. Um, so things are going to cancel out now. We don't have to know the mass of your rolling object because mass actually cancels out uh, this whole equation. And that's gone. Also, if you um, distribute the square in here, r squared and r squared cancels out. So you also don't have to know the radius of your you know, sphere. So if we rewrite this with everything gone, it's a g h is equal to one half v squared plus one half c e squared. Okay, so we have like terms in those. They both have uh, v squared. So we can uh, pull the v squared out by dividing by v squared. That's gone, that's gone. We can also get the uh, one halves out of there by multiplying everything by two. So we're gonna multiply by two. So we'll have two GH uh, over V squared. Let's write that out. So it's two GH over V squared is equal to C. No, one plus C, one plus C. So the last thing we have to do is subtract one from each side uh, to get C on its own. So equation three, uh, let's write that up here in the corner. Uh, C is going to be equal to two G, that's a D, two G H over V squared uh, minus one. I would do this first. So it's 2gh divided by v squared minus 1 is going to give you your c value. So that's, that's equation 3. Um, this is equation 1. This is equation 2. All right, and let's see how our number came out uh, for equation 3. So putting in our values, c should be equal to uh, 2 times gravity, 9.81, times the height of the ramp, which uh, was 0.15, uh, divided by velocity squared, uh, which we calculated at 1.14. And uh, this whole thing has to be minus 1 in the end. Don't forget to do that. I'm telling myself, I guess, uh, two times 9.81 times 0.15. Am I missing any squares? Not yet. Divided by 1.14 uh, squared, and then subtract one from that whole thing, gives me 1.26. So my C is equal to 1.26. That's my C value. How does that compare to the actual C value? Not very good, actually. Um, your C value should be 0.4. So I have a 1.26. It's supposed to be 0.4. So I can calculate my uh, percent error and see how bad I am at things, and feel bad about myself. So if you remember that percent error, is uh, your experimental minus actual over actual times 100%. Okay, 
ran out of boardroom. Sorry about this. So um, my experimental value is 1.26. It's supposed to be 0.4. So, and then we'll divide that by 0.4. Oh my gosh. I think I'm even worse than Sam. So I have a percent error of 215%. So 215% off. I was really hoping that my redesign ramp would do better than that. I have a good mind to, to redesign it all over again and see if I can get it to launch more vertically. I think uh, you know, that transition from the ramp to being horizontal is pretty tricky and something's going on there. But hopefully this helps you uh, figure out your lab data and hopefully your lab data is a little bit better than mine. But that's the process for the rotational motion lab. Thank you very much.